subscribe, like, follow on Twitter. This is part two, lesson 10. All right. Bear with me a sec. I'm doing, I'm doing this video a little different. I'm trying to experiment. I'm limited in my ways right at the moment. So I'm trying to find the best way to do this. Okay, uh, the last video I forgot to mention, these little curve sections here, right here, in the corners of the hem of your skirt. Whenever you're dealing with a skirt that have an angle like this, Right here, there's a line angle, and even the wider the angle, the more you're going to need this here. Now, you achieve this by measuring. All right, let me go back one sec. All right, whatever dress or skirt you're doing, if you're doing a dress, you would measure from the waistline. So if your dress is the length of your dress, you want it to be 45 inches or 35 inches. It doesn't matter from the waist you would measure at the side seam and you would measure down 35. Now, when you make your pattern, when making your pattern and say this bottom line flat here is 35, this angle is longer than that, right? That, that's why I say the wider it is, the longer this is going to be, even though from here to here is 35 to say, right? So you would measure on that side seam down from the waist or yeah, from the waist area, and measure down to where 35 is then you would make a mark. And then once you make that mark, well, then you would take your hip curve and hip curve one of these, and you would use this curve part, this long curve part right here, right? Or even this uh, French curve, French curve right here. That'll work as well, the one with the measurements. All right, you would take that and you would place it there and give yourself a gradual curve. Let me uh, make that a little bigger. Say so you want the curve to be gradual. You don't want it to be a hard turn. You just want a nice smooth transition from your measurement mark back into the flat hem. All right, do not make the mistake of just measuring the side seam and not measuring the rest of the skirt. And you don't make the mistake of measuring just the side seam and not the distance from here down in the center part of it. Because this is your length, that center part. So if your whatever this length is to this flat line on the bottom, you measure that, whether it's from the shoulder or from the waist. Then you do the same down here. All right. Dealing with this dress. The pattern. So if you want it from the neck section here. And you're measuring down. So whatever that length is. Okay. You measure it again from the waist down. That's how you know where you're going to measure from the waist on the side seam down so if that's 35 if it's 30 whatever it is coming from the waist down to the in the center section here that's what it need to be on your side seam as well as the back coming from the waist down to the back and then you just like i said draw in your curve gradual curve it must be a gradual smooth transition 
Okay, now where were we? All right, we started, uh, we ended at uh, four. We didn't start it, but we ended there. All right, front skirt, cut two. The seam allowance again, same as the back. Center front is on an angle and has an inverted pleat. I'll show you how to do that. Before we can trace the skirt off, place a piece of paper under the drag. I put two pieces, but you really don't need two. You just need one. So same as before, if you want to save your drawing as a draft, I mean your first pattern dress as a draft, put a piece of paper under it, trace off each piece separate, one at a time. Don't forget your grain lines and you add your seam allowance and then you keep the original as a draft. So when you come across another design that's similar to this, you can just add your new design lines, wherever they are and need to be. You know, don't, uh, don't use the draft over and over and over and over and over again. That's not gonna work because each time you use it, it degrades it. So you don't wanna use it too many times. Get used to having several different drafts that you can work from as far as similar designs. Because you will end up with uh, a lot of patterns in the end if you don't already. Okay, next. After checking the corners, what I just explained to you. After checking the corners of the skirt hem and then adding seam allowance, we cut away all the rest of the paper, not part of our pattern. Now the paper pleat, which is 25 inches wide, should be made be, should be much longer than the center front space it will be placed into, as seen here. The diagram here shows you how we will take the paper used for the paper pleat and fold it right in the middle. Right here, right? Then six inches away from our center fold, make a mark, both ends, top and bottom. Then six inches away from that mark, make another mark, both ends. So what that means is you're going to take your piece of paper that's 25 inches wide, that's 12 and 12, which makes 24, plus half inch on each end, 25. You fold it directly in half down the middle, in the center. That would be your center fold. From that center fold, you mark six inches. Measure six inches and you make a mark. Do it on both sides, right? Yes, you could do it before you fold it. But it just keeps you more focused if you fold it. Measure six inches away, make your mark. Then six inches away from that one, you make another mark, both sides. And what you should have left is a half inch. That's your seam allowance. Okay. Now you should have a half of an inch left to the edges of your pleat. Take the mark at the edge of the paper pleat and bring it to the center fold and fold it. Checking folds fall on marks, flattening it, and then placing one of the skirt patterns, the front bottom skirt part, yes, pattern pieces over it. Line up the center front with the skirt pattern to the seam allowance of the paper pleat, leaving a little of the paper pleat exposed at the top and bottom. So once you fold it in half, make your six inch mark, make your six inch mark, you're going to take that last six inch mark you made, the one that's at the half inch seam allowance. You're going to take that and line it directly up with the center fold. You're not lining up the edge, which is the half inch seam allowance. No, just the mark. You're lining the mark up with the center fold and you're going to flatten it, making sure that this fold here and the fold on the other side falls directly on to your first six inch mark right so you have your center fold six inch mark mark which becomes a fold line 